Hi, my name is Salo Bindari. I'm an attending here at NYU Medical Center in Bellevue Hospital, and I'm here with a video from EM Core on how to set up an arterial transducer. Uh, we oftentimes put in arterial lines, uh, but we leave up the arterial transducer set up to our nurses. Uh, however, the point of this video is to show you all how to do it yourself. So I'm here along with uh, my partner, Dr. Brian Lynn. Uh, say, say what's up, Brian? What's up, Brian? Alrighty, and uh, and we'll go through the step uh, one step at a time. Essentially this is a uh, aseptic technique uh, as soon as you start to poke the uh, pressure bag. Um, however, we're not going to do it just for video purposes. So, uh, the first thing you want to do is get all your equipment ready. Uh, there's essentially five things that you're going to need. You're going to need pressure cable, you're going to need a transducer holder, you're going to need a pressure bag, you're going to need a bag of 500 cc's of normal saline, as well as your tubing and your transducer kit, which should essentially come in one of these. I've actually already opened it up for you and have it laid out, but it's essentially everything that's in here. And it comes with a packet that has certain caps in it as well, which we'll go through in a bit. So the first thing is understanding how all these tubings are connected and how they all work. So let's just go through that so you guys understand the big picture. So first we're going to spike uh, this bag of normal saline. There's going to be fluid that travels in this tubing all the way down, all the way down, up until this transducer right here. And then it's going to continue to fill this tubing. It'll go into a syringe, which is just an auxiliary port to essentially remove blood. And then it'll continue all the way down and go into the, the patient over here, which is on this end. So. In the old days, or actually previously, we used to not have such uh, amazing setups that have this extra syringe here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But just so you all know, a lot of the older systems may actually have something that looks like this, that from the transducer onwards is essentially just various stopcocks up until you get to the patient. So don't worry uh, if you don't have the syringe setup. If you have the old setup, it's essentially fine. Uh, it's the same principles and the same thing that you're going to do for that. Uh, so what happens is this end is going to be connected into the patient, into the arterial line. Uh, as soon as that uh, pressure wave uh, from the patient's artery goes into this, uh, into this port over here, it's going to move this column of fluid that's in here a certain amount in certain pulsations. That's going to essentially get detected by this transducer right here. And as soon as it detects that amount of movement, it's going to send that and convert that into an electrical signal which will be outputted here and onto the monitor and that's what you're going to see as your arterial blood pressure. So that's the overview, that's the big picture. Now let's just break it down into each of the individual steps of what you're going to do. Step one is, is hooking up the pressure bag. So you're going to take, take off the little tab and spike your 500 cc bag of normal saline. And you're going to place it into your pressure bag just like this, bring it out on the other side. Perfect. And then you're going to pump up your pressure bag. Make sure your stopcock, the long arm of it, is pointed out towards the atmosphere. This allows all the air to go from here directly into the pressure bag. Whenever you have a stopcock, always remember the long arm is pointed in the direction that is going to be off. So if it's pointed that direction, the atmosphere is off, so all the pressure will go into the bag. <clears throat> Let's pump it up, pump it up, and essentially here's our gauge right over here. There's a little bit delay in this gauge, but it'll pop up in just a second. And you'll see that uh, we're going to pump it up to a pressure, there it goes, just like that. And you'll see we're going to pump up to a pressure right at 300 millimeters of mercury and that's the ideal pressure that you want. So as soon as you're there, you're going to take the stopcock and you're going to turn it off just like this so we don't lose that pressure and we're going to hook this up onto our IV pole. So that is step one. Step number two now is hooking up, uh, placing everything on the IV pole and getting all the air out of the line. So next thing we're going to need our transducer holder. We place this onto the IV pole just like that. And we're now going to take our setup and place it onto the uh, transducer holder just like this. The syringe fits very nicely right into the uh, middle section. It just literally slides in. Make sure you don't put it downwards like this. You want to put it upwards so you can read all the numbers uh, very clearly over here. 
Second thing you're going to do is actually take your transducer and place that into its slot as well and uh, slide that down. Make sure your cord is facing downwards over here. Um, so essentially you have a setup of the pressure bag with the tubing going down into the transducer and from the transducer you have a tubing going to the syringe and from the syringe you have the tubing that essentially goes to the patient. And we'll just unhook this a little bit over here so you can see it a little bit better. Perfect. So next step is going to be getting all the air out of the actual IV lines. So we're going to do it in steps. First we're going to get the air out from the pressure bag all the way down to the transducer over here. So we actually take this stopcock right here and take this stopcock and make sure that it's turned off upwards towards the patient. Um, this way all the fluid from the bag is going to be able to go out through this port right over here that actually has a little hole in it. This blue tab allows the line to be open and allows actually fluid to flow. So as soon as you pull on this you'll see fluid is ejected out of that port and perfect. So as soon as all the bubbles are out of the, uh, out of the IV tubing you're done with that portion and you're going to lock it in that direction. Now we're going to take out all the air from here all the way towards the end of the IV tubing that goes towards the patient. And essentially you're going to do the same thing. We'll get a little basin just to make sure we are clean on this part. And we'll do the same thing. We'll pull on the tab and make sure that IV tubing is clear of any and all air bubbles. And as soon as that's done, boom, we are done. So now all of the air bubbles are essentially out of the IV tubing and now we're ready to connect it to our monitor. So let's just go back here and essentially this port is going to connect to our monitor. Brian, if you want to take a look at the monitor over here, and let's just show that there are actually two ports right here that you can place this. I'm going to place it in one of the ports on the left side. The right side is essentially for CVP monitoring oftentimes, but you can use that as well. Uh, but this is just what's done oftentimes here at NYU. I'll take that, put that back. The other end, essentially right here, is just going to go and connect right uh, onto the actual arterial transducer itself. And that clicks in very easily. And now our monitor is on. So if this is actually connected appropriately, if you take the part that goes into the patient, which is right here, and you wave it around, you should see on the monitor a little bit of artifact. That means everything hooked up and everything is connected correctly. Alrighty, so that's the second part is getting all the air out of the IV tubing. Last part is essentially going to be leveling uh, the arterial line. You want to zero it, make sure it's zeroed to the atmospheric uh, pressure. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to expose this port right here, the one that had the hole in it, we're going to expose that to the atmosphere. First thing you want to do is take the stopcock and you want to turn it upwards so it's off to the patient again. Uh, and then you're going to unscrew, unscrew this right here, this cap. And now you're essentially exposed to the atmosphere. So as soon as you're exposed to the atmosphere, you have to tell the computer that this is what I want zero to be. So we're going to come back up here, Brian, and we're going to take a look at the screen. And there's a button here that says zero. All you're going to do is press the zero button. And two more options press pop up, and you press zero ABP or zero arterial blood pressure. You're going to press that again. And essentially that is zeroing it for you. Perfect. And we're right at zero. Excellent. Now, I want you to notice one more thing over here on this side uh, in terms of stopcock. Now, in ter instead of replacing this cap back on that we had before, we're actually going to change this and replace it with one of the caps that were in the packet insert that they gave us. This cap right here uh, looks the same from this side, but it actually does not have a hole on that side, unlike this cap which actually has a tiny little hole in it which allowed that uh, fluid to escape before. So we're going to take this one off and put this one uh, back on so there's no more fluid or air that can actually get in or out of the system. We'll just shut that off and this is the one that we're going to actually replace back on after we have 
zeroed it. And essentially, you are now essentially have completed with the, uh, the setup procedure for the transducer line. This end will now get connected to the arterial line and you're ready to uh, transduce the pressures. And that's it. Now a couple things just to note, just to make sure we're all complete in terms of our understanding of everything, is if you have this syringe option over here, you can actually draw blood. And I'm just going to show you very quickly uh, how to do that. You take a, we'll just, let's take a little bit of orange juice over here. We'll assume this is uh, the patient's blood because this is all I have right now. Uh, this along with a bunch of tuna sandwiches in the fridge. Uh, this is all we got right now. So we'll just assume this is the patient's blood and this is actually connected to the arterial line just so you can actually see the color in the uh, tubing. So let's say you want to draw some blood from a patient. You click on the syringe and you pull it down. Blood gets drawn up into the syringe and this is essentially what is wasted. That's wasted and now this port right here can be accessed to actually uh, withdraw the blood. As soon as you withdraw the blood that you need, whether it's an arterial sample or anything like that, this you can let go of, and now you're gonna take that waste that you had earlier, and you're going to put it back inside the patient. So you never really have to actually waste all that, uh, all that blood, which is why this system is so great. Um, so that's essentially the advantage of having this system. Last thing is in terms of troubleshooting. General troubleshooting techniques, if you feel like you have a wave, uh, that is over damped and it's very flattened waves. Uh, a couple things that you can do is just make sure that your bag is uh, inflated correctly to up to 300. Make sure this is leveled appropriately as well. Um, and also make sure that uh, there's no air or kinks in the system uh, as well. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when you actually set this up, you always want to make sure you set it up at the level of the patient's phlebostatic axis, which is the intersection of their nipple and the uh, fourth intercostal space, which is essentially the fourth intercostal space and the mid-axillary line. Um, that's essentially where you want to set this up on the patient's uh, body. Using some older systems, some people would actually tape the transducer to patient's sides, but if you have this system, it's probably much easier to keep it attached to uh, the stand over here, but you want to make sure that that height is correct. So if you have a dampened wave, you're going to check your bag, you're going to check, make sure the height is okay on this, make sure all the air bubbles are out as well, um, and make sure there's no kinks in the tubing either. If you have an under damp system or very large waves that are appearing, a um, couple things that you can do essentially are also to make sure there's no air bubbles in the systems and remove any sort of excess tubing. Sometimes extra tubing can cause that to happen. Um, but as long as, those are, as long as those are intact, you should be good. So those are all the basics. All you need to know to set up a transducer to do it yourself. It's essentially the three steps. The pressure bag, getting the air out of the line, and then zeroing the line, and that's it. It's not that hard. Do it next time you're on your shift, practice it, and uh, you can set it up next time you have a patient. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.